Hi, I'm Eric Johnson. This is step four in the assessment of a fish health outbreak. This is actually not a bad place for most hobbyists to start a fish disease outbreak, and I'll probably have that on the uh, YouTube thumbnail for this video. Uh, in any fish disease outbreak, uh, pond, fish tank, salt water, doesn't matter, um, you absolutely have to start out with water quality testing, and probably one of the first um, because it's first in the cycle, which I'll explain in a minute, is ammonia. Uh, ammonia testing, very, very important. I don't even know why somebody would try to manage a fish disease outbreak without assessing that. Um, it is probably in the top five causes of fish disease and uh, probably one of the number one ruiners of the fish hobby for people when they first set up a fish tank, and I'll tell you why. So... Basically, fish, when they pee and poop, they produce the equivalent of nitrogen, which is in the form of, don't, don't sleep, uh, in the form of ammonia. It's fish pee, basically. And uh, it builds up in a system unless bacteria are present to break it down. Well, in most natural systems, bacteria are present to break it down, and that's pretty cool. Um, except brand new systems. When you first set them up, they don't have that those germs in there to break down the ammonia, so it builds up. So you kind of get the idea that this could be a major player in a new tank, brand new pond, brand new fish system set up, because it doesn't have the beneficial germs and the ammonia is building up. Fortunately, those bacteria do grow. You can get them and put them in a system. Uh, the best place to get them is from another system that you have that's working well. Um, but also, um, you can compensate ammonia with water changes. You can add ammonia binders that temporarily will keep the ammonia from being as toxic. You can also replace water continuously, which I personally prefer, uh, and very probably not have an ammonia problem if you're feeding moderately. God, I hope you have a pen, because I'm covering a lot of information really fast. So basically, as step four, testing ammonia, and then you might say, well, okay, what are the symptoms of ammonia? How do I test it? What should I think and do? So the symptoms of ammonia uh, poisoning are, uh, first, a history that supports that, and second, um, a test that proves it, uh, dip-type test kits, and I have a video on why dip tests are the best. Uh, personally, I prefer them because... Um, they're quick and easy, and they're accurate to the degree that they'll tell you yes or no, you have an ammonia problem. It doesn't matter if your ammonia level is three or four. If you have ammonia, you have sick fish, and you have things you have to do, whether it's a three or a four. I, I think it's absurd when people argue about a half a point accuracy on an ammonia test, because if you're down there at a half a point of ammonia, it probably doesn't matter anyway. Anything over a half a point you probably should be doing water changes and reducing your feedings anyway. Okay, so back to my point. Testing for ammonia. The symptoms of ammonia poisoning would be something like gasping fish, excess mucus, clamped fins, isolating, failure to eat, going to the bottom, fin rot, the appearance of fungus and other disorders because the fish's immune system is suppressed by ammonia, uh, death, gasping at the surface. Problem is that that assortment of symptoms is exactly the same as every other water quality parameter and just about every single parasitism. Everything causes fish to clamp their fins and stop eating, isolate, go to the bottom, form excess mucus, gasp, and die. So what I'm saying is, is that these symptoms charts, unless they're referring to a mouth that is rotting off these symptom charts aren't really going to help you very much because it could be any of these so many things. So in this very brief talk about ammonia, um, we've discussed that it comes from the fish. It's destroyed by bacteria, but good germs that we need to take care of. And um, that ammonia looks like just about everything else you test for it. And if you find ammonia, then uh, you would want to reduce feeding because that's where fish pee and poop comes from. Reduce your feedings. Consider an ammonia binder and there's several out there that are very good. Um, water changes, a good thing, and then possibly engineering a trickle system to replace water all the time, 
which just keeps the ammonia level at a very moderate to low level until the system cycles. And then when those beneficial bacteria come on board, you're glado. So that's ammonia. Now let me take you to item five, and that is what ammonia becomes in a healthy system.